is this thing on? All right, gentlemen, coming to main stage next, this is Bunny. Get up there. She's got a tornado of titties coming your way. Get those dollar bills ready. She's got an ass that shakes like Michael J. Fox. So get up there and throw, throw, throw them dollars. Dude, that is fucking iconic. <laughs> What's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. Today, I have the ultimate... Dumb Blonde. The ultimate... No. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I was going to say. You know what, though? That's what I, I honestly... It's so funny because that's kind of... When I created Mary Carey, like, I was like, she has to be, like, this bubbly. Like, it was kind of, like, the persona I wanted her to be. Yeah, like, totally. But everything was always very calculated. Well, so. I'm but not, the I'm, ultimate dumb blonde. No, I'm, I'm okay the ultimate that. starlet <laughs> and icon, Mary <laughs> Carey, is what I was going to say. But um, I'm so happy that you're here. When I yes. did name my um, podcast Dumb Blonde, mm-hmm. it was tongue-in-cheek. Exactly. You know, because people look at us, they're I like, oh, they got... And they when got, they, then they really believe it. I'm like, you know what? If I was really that dumb, like, would you have a podcast? Yeah. Would I be able to plan this? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? If I'm really that dumb. Like, yeah. Only, but only dumb people will think you're dumb. Exactly. You know, like people anyone. Small <laughs> minds discuss small things. Yes, That's what yeah. I always say. <laughs> Let's tell everybody who the Mary Carey is. So in case <laughs> people, I'm sure that unless they live under a fucking you know rock. It depends. It's funny. I can tell now with the guys who are only fans or if I can or anything. If they do, always like, do you, you know who I am? If I don't, I'm like, you're under the age of like 30 or 28 then, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, I was only like 19, 20, 21, you know, when yeah. I first started doing stuff. And yeah. then, so I wasn't, you know, and then 23, and I actually can always tell by their age too, if they're like 28 to 34, I'm like, ah, oh, you saw me on Cinemax in like 2005. Yeah. Because I'm Skinamax. like, because I can always tell because <laughs> they were not able to watch porn online. My mom is schizophrenic and she was adopted. So my grandparents had adopted her mm-hmm. and raised her, gave her, they were amazing people. Right. And, um, but you know, they didn't really want her to have a baby because she was a lot of work for them. Right. And then, but she met my dad who has severe cerebral palsy. Oh. You know, they had met like, I think at like a church retreat, you know? Yeah. And so then they had me. Aww. And at three months old, you know, like they were not taking good care of me. I mean, I've done Aww. so much like work through like different rehabs I've gone to. Yeah. And apparently those three months of life is what caused me to need so much attention now later in life. I mean, I danced probably maybe six hours, or seven hours a day. Right. I was like, God, you know, from three o'clock until like 10 o'clock at night, you know, wow. regular classes and solo rehearsals. And, um, and I was obsessed with it. It's all I ever wanted to do. Right. And, um, so when I got my period, it was a passion. Though, it was, oh yeah, it was, mm. well, you know, I realize now looking back, it was an addiction. Like I get very addicted to anything I like. Addicted oh, okay. to people. It was an addic- escape maybe also. You know, I think it was. I think I just, well, it was something I was really good at. And right. I realized, like, I was always the star girl of it. Mm-hmm. And I liked, I loved being on stage. Right. I liked being center of attention. You've got three months, or you're, not, you're not the main role. And, you know, that's very hard to tell a 17-year-old. So yeah, I was that's having, been in it her whole fucking life. Yeah, yeah, and I'd write down all my food for her and, like, bring it every day. And it wasn't a healthy diet, but it, I was keeping my calories low. I'd have a Diet Coke and a fat-free Pop-Tart every morning, a frozen yogurt for lunch, that's not, uh, you know, a piece of pita bread and so cheese. So that definitely breeds you know? an eating and that's disorder. What happens. So it definitely breeds that. But um, I yes. couldn't imagine being a fucking ballet teacher telling a little girl that this is all she can eat. Like, I understand you know? telling a kid no fried food, no soda, stuff yeah. like that. But to, to, you know, micromanage it down to what you oh, were eating. Strict. When I was 16, I was at the Cleveland Ballet School for a summer program. I used to audition and I'd have to go over. I had a scholarship because we couldn't afford for me to just go to where I always got in. And I went to Cleveland Ballet full scholarship because I was full scholarship. I had to get weighed every week right. like little ballerina girl to all of a sudden like I wanted to have boyfriends. I needed to have attention. Ballet wasn't my priority. Cause well, because could, your your father figure yes, was gone. Exactly. So you, you needed that love from And I had a fear else. of, oh my God, my grandma's going to die next. I have no family. You know, mm. people, they look at like yeah. sex workers like us and yeah. they just assume like, oh my God, she was abused as a child and yeah. fucking had a horrible life. It's and it's true. like, when, they, when you get to hear this side of your story, it's yeah. actually really empowering. You know, it's funny because that's something Dr. Drew, like the first like week when I would meet with him, he's like, nope, you were, def- you were molested. You were definitely sexually, you were, as a child right. and I was like no like she's like you're repressing I'm like no Drew if anything I think I was like overly attentioned as a child 100% overly attention uh, and well, I that can, stems back to your grandfather mm-hmm. you know passing away so after that when did you make the turn to start um, how like did stripping. you even get into oh like God, the adult with, industry um well I remember the first time I ever saw porn or anything I was 16 and yeah. my girlfriends was having a party at her house and they had like those channels and we had our boyfriends over and the guys were watching those girls and I was so mad 
I was like, <laughs> so I, I turned it into, oh my God. Like now, you know, the way girls do. Yeah. That's so gross. Why are you watching it? Ew. God, this is so cool. Yeah. I want to be the girl that the guys like. And then yes. I started, then like, I remember like I became obsessed with Pamela Anderson. Love Pam. You know, I had never even seen a vibrator before when I showed up there. They should have, bring your toys. And I was like, I think my grandma threw them away. Yeah. Like, cause I thought they literally <laughs> met. So we did that. And then I did um, like one, two, three, four boy girl scenes. So over mm-hmm. three movies. And then he called me up one day and I was like, do you want to run for governor? And I was like, I mean, I dropped out of college <laughs> my last year and I was a theater major. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Can I? And he's like, well, you're over 18. No felonies. Right. I was like, yeah, no felonies. He's like, okay. He's like, we just got to get your signatures and I'll pay your fee. And you can do it. So um, how old were you when you first ran uh, for governor for uh, California, right? I just turned 23. Yeah. To see the rest of this episode, and you're going to want to see the rest of this episode, head over to www.dumbblondeunrated.com.